This is an in-depth tutorial on how to do filtration in station ears. This video assumes that you know how to use the hydraulic pipe bender. So to begin, you have yourself a little base, and you can breathe inside without your helmet on, you've pressurized it. But it gets tainted as soon as you use the arc furnace. To check the toxins, you can take out the tablet and put in the atmospheric analyzer. For reference, O2 is oxygen, N2 is nitrogen, CO2 is carbon dioxide, X are volatiles, and then there is H2, which is hydrogen. The game considers hydrogen and X toxins. Everything you need to do filtration in the game is in the hydraulic pipe bender. You may want an APC, which is an electronic sprinter, but that's not necessary. At the very least, to do filtration, you're going to need two passive vents, two atmospheric kits, a filter of oxygen and a filter of nitrogen, piping, and cables. All of these things but cables are located in the hydraulic pipe bender. You can get a hydraulic pipe bender from the auto lathe. Cables are located in the electronic sprinter. There's good news for some of you and bad news for others. If you've used all iron frames in your base, then it's going to be very difficult to do this without depressurizing it. If you've put walls anywhere, this is significantly easier for you since you can put pipes anywhere through them and get them outside of your base. This process can be done in pretty much any order, but if you've already pressurized your base, then you're going to want to actually go outside first and start the process by placing down the atmospheric kits. That's what I did here to prove that you can do this without actually depressurizing your base. Once you're outside, you're going to place down the atmospheric kit. But when you first start to place it, it'll say air conditioner. That's not what you want. You're going to scroll wheel so it says filtration. That's the one you really want. You're going to want to place the filtration somewhere close to your base so it's easy to power. It's also done this way so you can get the pipes back into your base without using so many. Once you place the first filtration unit, you're going to place the second one pretty close by. This is because you're going to need to put piping between the two of them as well as cabling, and you need a bit of space to do that. As a reminder, this tutorial was done in mind of a base that is already pressurized. You don't have to pipe this specific way, but if it's pressurized, then you're going to have to. From the input of one of your filtration units, you're going to lead pipe back to your base and then put it in through a wall somewhere. You don't want it to dump out in the ceiling, you're going to want to have it run across a frame, that way you can plug a passive vent into it. You can see how I'm doing it here. The frame is the wall of my base, but the ceiling is actually made of walls. It's kind of confusing, but it's the way I did it. From the output of the other filtration unit, do the exact same thing. Next, for the first filtration unit that you hooked in, go from the waste to the input of the second filtration unit. After that, on the second filtration unit, you can just hook in a single pipe. You don't necessarily need to, this is just actually going to be waste. Next, go to the output of the first filtration unit and then pipe it so it actually connects to the output of the second one. The video you're seeing now is showing how I did that. You use a T-junction on the second output so that way you can just run right through. This is done because you're separating out the filters. The ordering on this isn't important, but in one machine, put a filter of oxygen in one and then a filter of nitrogen in the other. When you put a filter in these filtration machines, it changes the output to be whatever that filter is. For example, you put the oxygen filter in one, the output will be just oxygen. The nitrogen filter will produce just nitrogen. The waste port is everything else. Now that you've got the piping set up, you can power up the filtration units. Like I mentioned earlier, you're building these close to your base so you have access to power. You're going to need it. Once the filtration units are receiving power, you're going to go back inside of your base and then set up the passive vents. You should see two pipes sticking into your base, and if you don't, you're going to need to find where they are. Just hook up the two passive vents. As soon as you hook them in, you may notice the air particles going straight to them. The filters are starting to do their work, but it's not efficient yet. You're going to need to go back outside and turn them on. From here, you can take out your tablet and put in the atmospheric analyzer. If you see X, it'll say a toxin is detected until there's less than 0.1 mole. I wish it wasn't such a small number, since it's clear that X is taking up less than 1% of my atmosphere, and yet it's still detecting it as a toxin. But now your filtration system is actually set up. It just takes a little bit of time to work. Using the filtration system the way I set it up is technically inefficient. It's not wrong, but it's inefficient. You can use the filters for volatiles and pollutants and put them into canisters. This is useful for when you need more welding fuel or jetpack propellant or anything. You can use it in that scenario. You can also use it as a way to fuel the furnace, but I'm not sure if I'd recommend it considering I've blown myself up too many times doing it. Filtration is rather easy and you really only need to set up one or two of the filtration units. I do recommend using two of them and separating out the oxygen and nitrogen. 
Thank you for watching this tutorial. If there's something you want me to cover, be sure to leave a comment below.